Turkic nomads of the steppes. Okay, cool, you've got my attention. Turkic nomads that converted to Judaism? What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Our story begins in the Pontic Steppes of the early 600s. The supermassive and legendary empire, the Gokturk Cognate, has split into two after a long civil war, leaving the western half to collapse under the pressure of the Sui Dynasty and later the conquest of the Tang Dynasty. This leaves nothing but a power vacuum for the people of these harsh Stepplands. Here, two mighty confederations of tribes fight for supremacy. The Bulgars, now united under Kubrat Khan and the old Great Bulgaria, are under constant pressure from the fierce tribes of the Khazars. Following Kubrat's death, the Khazars take control of the Pontic Steppe, subjugating the Bulgar peoples and adopting their language as a lingua franca. Kubrat's son Aspura would flee to the south where he would found the first Bulgarian Empire in the Balkans while his brother would travel north to the Volga River establishing the Volga Bulgars. From this the Khazars would form into a cognate which is a union of lesser khanates. But a new and even more powerful threat would arise in the following decade. The first ever Islamic Caliphate, the Rashidun Caliphate, was attempting to expand into the Caucasus in 652, a large Islamic army under Abd ar Rahmed ibn Rabia advanced towards the Khazar capital, Balanzar. A huge battle took place, both brave armies motivated by intense fervor. Catapults and cavalry were utilized by both sides, but the Khazars under Korpin Tarkhan inflicted heavy losses onto the Arabs, leaving them to flee in absolute defeat. Soon after, well soon being a, like a few years, but you know, relatively soon, the Caliphate would suffer a civil war, you might have heard of it, you know, the one that made them become the Umayyad Caliphate, yeah that one, prevented any more Muslim raids for the Arab being. The city though, had proven itself to be strategically inferior, and the capital was moved to Samander, and then later, Attil. Now I'm going to take the time to go into the government structure of the Cognate. Now the civil and everyday affairs as well as military campaigns were controlled by the Kagen Bek who was parallel to the Shogun of Tokugawa Japan. To assist the Bek, beneath him were subordinate officers known as Tarkins. Khazar armies were expected to never retreat and fight until the death otherwise returning soldiers would be executed. The Cognate, however, in a greater sense, was ruled by an absolute ruler, the Kagan, whom the Beck paid homage to. Upon being selected to be Kagan, the nobles would strangle him until he shouted out how many years he wanted to rule. After that period passed, he would be executed. Now what is an emperor without his royal guards? The Kagan was guarded peculiarly by Muslim mercenaries from the region of Khwarezm. I mean, come on, how is that not cool? As the Khazars progressed through the 7 and 800s, they developed a very strong economy, taxing all transit coming from east and west that it had traveled through Khazaria. This was, of course, the backbone of the Khazar economy, and their trade routes were heavily enforced. The year 700 marks the beginning of a 200-year period known as Pax Khazarica. The Khazars would found Kiev on the Dnieper River, using it as a trading outpost. However, this period would be interrupted as the Umayyad Caliphate under Caliph Yazid II expanded into Armenia and the Southern Caucasus, threatening the Khazars leading to the Second Arab Khazar War. The Cognate in response sent a terrifyingly sized army of 30,000 troops and invaded Durban, crushing the local armies and raiding throughout the neighboring Islamic Emirates. In the year 724, Arab general Al-Jahar ibn Abdallah al-Hakim, in a long drawn out battle which saw intense bloodshed on both sides, managed to inflict a defeat on the Khazars, conquering Caucasian Iberia and founding the Emirate of Tbilisi. The Bek Barjik seeked vengeance for this devastating defeat. He conquered Azerbaijan city by city and took the head of a killed Arab general as a decoration for his throne. But this victory was short-lived, 
as in the year 737, Muslim general Marwan ibn Muhammad invaded deep into Khazaria, forcing the Khagan to surrender and pledge his nation under Sharia law and the allegiance of the Umayyad Caliphate. All had seemed lost for this mighty empire, but then a miracle occurred that would return Pax Khazaria to the Caucasus and the Pontic Steppe. The Abbasid Revolution began in 744, leading to an inability for the Arabs to govern the steppes, leaving the Khagan to return to his full power. It is in this period that the Khazars did what they are known for. Well, I mean, if anybody knows them at all, that is. Yeah, that's right. Their conversion to Judaism. As a letter from the last Khagan to a rabbi in Cordoba will lead us to believe, it, it's called the, the Khazar Correspondence. It's one of the main historic documents we have to get information about the Khazars from. And what basically what this Khagan states is that the conversion of Judaism took place in around the late 700s under the rule of Bulan Khagan. Bulan is described as a, being a pretty cool guy, and uh, he had several visitations from angels, leading him to seek the one true faith. Bulan would go on to expel the wizards and idol worshippers and the sorcerers, whatever wizards and sorcerers are. I mean, this is the English translation of what he said. I assume it was translated by Oxford University. I don't know what a wizard is, but, you know, whatever. Take that as you will. But anyway, so this gained the attention of the, the Byzantine Empire, or Eastern Roman Empire, and then the Abbasid Caliphate, and both of these empires were seeking to end Khazar raids on the border. To end it, they wanted to make the Khazar's allies through conversion. Both empires sent religious missionaries, and Bulan agreed to hold a religious debate where he asked the Muslim Qadi and the Christian priests to argue with one another until they proved which religion is superior to him. After seeing neither arrive to any conclusion, after excessive dispute, he asked the priest of the religion of the Israelites and the Muslims, which is preferred. Of course, not wanting to agree with a Muslim Qadi, the priest told Bulan that the Israelites were a superior religion. Bulan then asked the Qadi of the religion of the Christians and the Israelite, which is preferred. The Qadi, of course, not wanting to agree with the Christian priest, told Bulan that the Jews were preferred. Upon hearing these two responses, Bulan Kagan adopted Judaism as the religion of his state, circumcising himself and all of his nobles. Of course, likely, outside of the nobility, Khazaria would continue to be a very religiously diverse nation, with Jews, Christians, Muslims, and pagans living together. It's worth noting that Judaism contains a mythical origin for the various Turkic tribes, and the Khazars took this tradition very dear. The mythical brother of Askenazi in the Torah, Tagamara, was said to be the father of all Turkic people, or if you will, the Ataturk before Mustafa Kemal, hmm? He had several mythical sons who began each Turkic tribe. Kozar for the Khazars, Bulgar for the Bulgars, Avar for the Avars, Yujur for the Yugurs, Alan for the Alans, etc. You know, not very creative, but uh, kind of neat, I guess. The demise of the Khazars was a slow and painful one, as their decline would come after a series of unfortunate events. The Slavs had been developing power towards the west of Khazaria, causing the cognate to eventually lose control of Kiev by the 860s to Olag of Novgorod, founding the Kievan Rus state. At the same time, Pax Khazaria was threatened by the growing power of the Pechenig Khanates south of the Rus. Their relations with the Byzantines had previously deteriorated, most likely leading to them encouraging the neighbors of the Khazars to engage in raids and other undermining activities. The Byzantines and the Khazars likely fought in Crimea and were looking for a way to isolate the Khazars and destroy them. Though the death of the Cognate would come from a mighty conqueror who would be the bane of existence for so many Eastern European states. The Great Destroyer, Svidoslav I of Kiev, a staunch pagan who in his short life would be a man of great chaos and success. Svidoslav began his campaign in the Pontic Steppe by rallying the support of Khazari's neighboring Slavic tribes and will force any who didn't comply with him to submit by force. He would invade the Volga Bulgars, a Khazarian vassal state. A vassal state is a, a state that's dependent upon or under the control of another state. Svidoslav showed his resourcefulness by employing Ogots and Pechenig tribesmen as mercenaries to counter the well-equipped and more elite Khazarian and Bulgarian cavalry. After his campaign of the Volga, this unstoppable man would overwhelm the Khazars in a devastating circular sweep, first occupying Sarkel, converting it to a Slavic settlement, then subsequently sacking Khazarian Crimea. 
The destruction of the cognate would come as Fidoslav destroyed the royal city of Attil, leaving but a remnant state if possibly even that. A visitor to Attil after this hellish destruction of an empire would describe the scene as not having a grape or raisin remain, nor a single leaf on a branch. The Khazarian people, not of a single ethnicity, would be absorbed by successive hordes and empires. This bad boy would move on to the south and end the reign of our friends from earlier, the First Bulgarian Empire, destabilizing them, leading to their collapse in the future by Byzantium. I just don't get why the Khazars aren't talked about in every single world history class on the planet. Like, come on, they're the only Jewish empire in history. They were Turkic nomads in the steps that converted to Judaism. Like, how is that not the coolest thing you've ever heard of in your entire life? Eh, whatever, I guess. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next one coming up, Haitian Revolution.